Hello, Internet, and welcome back to Antiheroes Anonymous, or welcome for the first time if it's your first time joining us. I'm Ethan, and I'm the Dungeon Master for this 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons show. <laughs> um, I will have some announcements and a recap, but before we get into any of that, Nick, you know what to do. Yep. Hi, I'm Nick. I play Embers of White Ash, it's Sol, the Daxi Monk. Hi, I'm Kay, and I play Lady Elwyn Amalos, who is the elvish Circle of the Land druid. Hello, I'm Melissa. I play Charm, who is a Thray Queen, Swarmkeeper Ranger. Hi, I'm Zach, and I play Vert, who is a Changeling Armor Artificer. Uh, thank you, everyone. So, those announcements, really quick. Uh, we premiere our episodes on Mondays at 7 p.m. Pacific Time on YouTube. Throughout the show, we use a variety of custom items, enemies, all that jazz, so be aware of that as you're watching. Um, the character portraits... Uh, we're drawn by a variety of or artists at this point. You can check the description for information about uh, who drew each one. Um, if you need a refresher on anything that's going on in the campaign, you can check out our campaign wiki at World Anvil. Uh, other than that, you can check the video description for links and information about all of that and more, uh, including some links to some Black Lives Matter and Stop Asian Hate resources. Uh, also, you can follow us on Twitter, at AntiHeroesAnon, if you so choose. Um, and other than that, we just hope you enjoy the show, share with your friends, and come back to watch some more. And, uh, before I can trip over my words anymore, let's roll the intro video. <laughs> Previously on Antiheroes Anonymous, uh, the Silver Seekers have saved the city of Amberhearth from an invasion of giant ants and are now helping its returning citizens rebuild. They have also earned themselves a seat on the town council where they helped their friend Nora Froth Tankard um, and also their friend Nadia uh, to establish new businesses within the city. Their next journey will be to the drow city of Erudition in the Underdark where they hope to establish new trade routes, find a lead on Elwyn's mother, investigate the League of Terrors, and more. Um, but before any of that, they have about a week or so to kill in the town um, to gear up and pursue their various individual interests. So we're going to do a downtime episode. Woo! Um, the group of you returned from the town meeting, uh, the town council meeting. You had a nice rest. Um, and you have about a week before it is time to head down into the Underdark. Um, what would you like to do? I will just turn it over to you. Um, I'm going to pick up from something we said we were going to do last session. Right. And <laughs> Embers is going to go to Vert and say, hey, um, now that things are kind of settled down, there's something I think you should see. Okay. And I'll take Vert down to the secret basement. Mm -hmm. or the secret room, the secret door. Mm -hmm. that embers had found previously i am um, i'm gonna draw drag you guys over there on the map here i'll switch the map so we are here now okay yeah you guys find yourselves in the dark kind of dank basement uh the room uh, at the very bottom of the step ladder that descends down from uh sort of the the kitchen pantry uh it's filled with boxes but you can push those aside uh, and yeah, one of those shelves, the one in the very middle there, uh, seems to be a secret, like you found a, a lock, I believe. Um, and it seems like upon closer inspection, you can find hinges and it looks like it'll swing open. Yeah. But it is locked? It is locked. Okay, so then I'll just 
um, get my, I don't remember what the item is called, but it's a thing I can turn into any type of tool. And yeah, I'll, the all-purpose tool. And I'll produce, actually I just have these tools, so I'll just get my these tools ready and I'll go for the lock. Okay, yeah. Roll I'll, that... I'll look to Ember's Beth. Let's try, let's try this first. Roll that um, these tools check. Okay. Uh... Dexterity plus proficiency. Just... Terrible. 16. 16? Mm -hmm. Um, You put the tools in and you kind of maneuver them a little bit and you you hear like a the start of a click um, but not the click of a lock opening. Oh no. The click of some hidden mechanism triggering oh, no. but you manage to pull the tools back out and extract them carefully enough that you don't trigger whatever was about to happen, mm -hmm. but you don't also you also don't get the door open. Oh, no. All right. A little too ambitious there. Uh, can I... Is it a investigation for looking at traps? Yeah, you okay. can do that investigation. All right. I'll help you with that. Yep. And that's... Um... Investigation. Okay. Oh, a 19 and a 17. That's pretty good. Uh, that is 23. Yeah. Um, hidden amongst the various, like, on these shelves, there's, like, pots and, uh, you know, jars and things like that. Most of them are filled with, like, nothing of really any importance. Um, but among them, hidden behind them, you find little tubes coming out of the wall. Mm. Um, and on there, you find... Um, a little bit of residue and you kind of pull that out and you smell it and uh, it definitely smells like these tubes will eject some kind of airborne toxin mm. oh yeah if something cool. happens so okay uh what would it take to disarm them uh now that you found them you could just like stuff rags in them i think in each of these tubes okay that are okay um Will they still will it still like ruin the mechanism? Like if I want to like repurpose it for somewhere else, or like disarm it so I can like use it somewhere else. Um, we'll say it depends on your next thieves tools check. Okay, sure. <laughs> so as a safety, then since we know where they are, we'll yeah, uh, pacify them, I guess, and then we'll try a thieves tools check. Um, all right, here we go again. You don't want to like summon Elwyn to cast guidance on you or anything. I I mean I can have I used to have guidance as well, but uh, I could. Can Can you get help with this? Can someone Can I just get help? That would be fine too. It'd be a little tough for someone to help you unless yeah. they've also got like yeah thief tools proficiency. Yeah. yeah, I don't have that proficiency. I just rely on my raw dexterity. I have the ability to cast against them. Gives you oh, okay, so yeah, maybe I'll I'll like if you want to bring me in on the big secret. I do. So <laughs> I'll like stand there and look at it and be like, I just want to end your service. That's all. Totally fine with me. No, I'm not. I'm not salty about it. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll just go up and hey, Alan, can you get the spell on me real quick? Mm -hmm. do a thing. <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah. Empress is showing me something downstairs. And what do you need? Uh, I need to be good at picking locks. Be better at picking locks, so that would be what I'm supposed to call That's it. That's dexterity. Yeah, yeah that's so, dexterity. All right. Um, then I can give you. I can give you. Uh, where is my spell? Forget what the dexterity is called. Something means grace. Cat's grace. Is it? Cat's wisdom. <laughs> Sorry, it's taking a minute for it to load. Where are you? Enhance ability, there it is. Cat's Grace. Yeah. Well, then I can give you a uh, Cat's Grace, but you'll be just as dexterous as our friend Amber's dad. Okay. Uh, there you go. Snowflakes mm -hmm. making like a feline mask on his face before <laughs> they melt in. Mm -hmm. Give him like cat paws for a second <laughs> before okay. it melts away. Looking at all of it and kind of like. <laughs> the sharp, like, picking claws. 
Yeah. Okay. Lock picking gloves. No, it melts away and you're fine. You feel a little bit more advantageous. I am very appreciative. Um, it also gives you the ability to not take damage if you fall 20 feet, so... Could be useful. <laughs> Are there trap doors, too? Like, you don't know. Yeah. And so we're going to find out. Thieves tools. 20 feet or less. No damage. Oh, yeah. Falling. Okay, yeah. so that's... That's plus four. 21. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, I, I just need to know also, does Elwyn, like, does she fall over after that? Or mm -hmm. she just minds her business. Okay. Yeah, she minds her business. She doesn't care. She's like, oh, yeah, sure. If you need to be able to pick locks, sure, whatever. You're doing some tinkering. Fine. Yeah. I trust you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, the door, you, you feel the proper kind of click, and the door Bye. swings Bye. ajar. Okay. Uh, inside you see, um, kind of a small room that is lit by what looks like two, uh, torch sconces on the wall that bear perpetual flame torches burning with green cool. color. Um, and in the, at the very back of the room, there's like a, like a, oops, what did I just do? I was trying to ping it. Um, there's like a, a suit of armor. That just uh, kind of stands there. And then opposing that, uh, there is a big metal vault door with like a spinning um, combination lock type mm -hmm. thing on it. Is that one that had like the big, like, like the big handle holes? on it? Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. there's like eight spokes or something like that. Yeah. So Vert will just kind of stand in front of the vault door and put his hands on his hips and look at Embers. Yeah. Em Embers is like, yeah, this is why I didn't tell anybody about this earlier. <laughs> I felt like we had a lot on our plates, and I didn't want to put more. All right, well, let's see. Crack the knuckles a little bit. Okay, and, um... Well, you've got an advantage for an hour. Yeah, and I'll think about how to <laughs> tackle this thing. Guess I should, uh, check for traps again. We yeah. should check for traps mm -hmm. again. Yeah. Um, what's... Is your investigation pretty good, or is it... I have a plus um, four. I'm not trained in it. I have a plus three. Okay, I also... Yeah. So, I guess you can help me again yeah, and then... Yeah. Okay. So, we'll look for traps or anything else of interest. Yeah, I don't know yeah. if you can specify other stuff. Oh, I got two fours. Okay, so I have no idea. <laughs> That's wow. eight. Yeah. Nothing reveals itself. Ember's yeah. like, totally out of her depth here. Yeah. You yeah. kind of, like, look at the floor, looking for, like, tiles that would push down. You check mm -hmm. the, like, for trip wires and things like that. Yeah. Looks clear. Of course it does. <laughs> Uh, okay. Yeah, go. Looks just safe. Looks like we disarmed the only trap down here. Yeah. It's I mean, the door, the door was secret and trapped, and I don't see why you go to more trouble after that. Me neither. God. Okay. Yeah, so I'll try and look at the vault and, I guess, um, see if it's locked. It is locked. Okay. But, um, yeah, you could use a, um, like another thieves tool check to try and get into this one as well. Okay. Can I can I help him by like listening in? Yeah, this Why one you can help with because yeah. it's not like a fine mechanism. Yeah. Okay. Just to like try and hear quick. I guess you can't get double advantage. But... Can I get double advantage? Not really. Maybe it'll lower the DC. Oh. Yeah, that's what I'll do. I'll lower the DC a bit. Uh, two twelves. So okay, doubles today, I guess. So that is should be sixteen. Sixteen. Mm -hmm. Um. Yeah, you're spinning it. And like you're being very dexterous and careful with, um, you know, each of your, each of your movements, and Embers is listening carefully. But like, it is a very precise yeah. safe. Is so, it? Um, how big is the door? I mean, it's like a, it's taking up a ten foot. Oh, it's huge. Square okay. of the wall. I mean, not all of it is the door itself. Some of that is like metal frame for the door. Yeah. But it's like a circular door on a pair of like thick hinges, you know. The hinges, aren't ex oh, my. <laughs> the hinges aren't exposed or anything, obviously, because then you could mm -hmm, just, like, mm -hmm. blast those and take the door off, but, yeah. Okay. Well, we're not making much headway at this second. There. Hmm. Well. I'm not sure. I'm trying to think if there's any spells that I have that I could use for this.
Because at this point, I can't just like keep trying, right? That's not really. Yeah, you'd have to you'd have to add something to your attempt. I think yeah. to try again. Um. Let's see. Did well, know the combo? Charm wouldn't know the combo. I don't. I was assuming so. Charm didn't even know about this room because we got the tour of the whole castle. Okay. Charm. This room would be unknown. Can to Charm. can we? Take a recess from this mm -hmm. and do an investigation around like any clues that might be around, like around the keep. The keep, like any personal journals that might have like. The problem is you haven't really found any personal journals. <laughs> yeah, that's right. yeah. Just, like, a couple of people have looked and no one has found anything yet. Yeah, so you could try. Yeah. All right. Yeah. I, I mean, it's that or. I don't think I have anything else I can do. Oh, we'll just have, maybe we just ask Elwyn to be like, and Charm be like, do you guys have any tricks for this? Yeah, we we'll go up and tell him about the door we found. Yeah, do that. Oh, well, was there any gap around the door? Something, even something like a spider might be able to get inside? It's sealed pretty tight. Yeah. Night Mantis um, like pulls out her rifle and like flips a couple switches on it and it kind of crackles with energy. She's <laughs> like, I've got a thunder cannon. Hinges on on this side. I mean, we could, well, we I could can, try force. I can well. heat the metal yeah. to weaken, weaken it and then maybe we could blast it open that way. It's worth a try. Yeah. I'll... But if it's like also something we could use too when we're done with it. Okay. Damaging it would probably be the last option for me, but I don't know. Do we want to Well if that... Elwyn heats the metal, that at least adds can something you... so you could try again. Yeah. Can you cast identify? I don't have identify. Oh, I wonder if that would do I have it? No. It's kinda weird. I would think Tepi... Butterfisher would have identify, but I guess not. Is that something that Teppy had, I think? Yeah, she Tuffins was the identifier. Oh, okay. Um. I, I don't know if there's any way we could divide the combination. Seems like the kind of thing that Lord Mr. Lath would have kept in his head rather than in the book. Possible. I could also try to freeze the hinges on the outside. I mean, I know they're on the inside of the thing, mm -hmm. but we could probably try to send some ice in there and maybe put ice around and, and expand it a little, maybe break, but still destroying it. Why don't you try and heat the metal and then we can have another go at the, at the lock. Try it. Okay. Um, is Charm down there now at this point, too? Yeah, Charm will go down and figure out, to, to try to see what's going on. Do you raise yourself at any point? Okay. All right. So, um, Elwyn heats the metal mm -hmm. um, around Show me where sort of where the. Be. Oh, can I have guidance too? Uh, no, because both, both guidance and heat, heat metal are concentration. So you're gonna lose your enhance ability too if I do this. Oh yeah. Oh. What's your uh, thief tools proficiency? Well, actually, if Ember's gonna help me again, I don't need advantage. My thief mm -hmm. tool proficiency. Yeah. Um, it should just be the proficiency bonus, right? Yeah. Uh, three, right? Yeah. Um, and this does have a plus five to oh. this kind of thing. Okay. That's fine. Um, then I'll let you then. Okay. And I will do the listening. So you, the two of you switch roles. I'm very, yeah. very good with her hands. She can do it. Okay. Then, <laughs> um, good luck. And I'll just put my hand on it and will it to get yep. watered. Okay. Thanks for your tools. Um, oh, that's a natural 20. Oh, Woo! snap. Oh, 25. Man. Okay. Yeah. Combination of everyone's efforts. Um, like, this time this? you managed to like twist 20. it to just the right combination. Um, and the door swings open inward, revealing another room lit by these perpetual green flamed torches. Mm -hmm. um, this room is wide. Um, maybe... 30, 30, 40 feet wide. Um, and as 
the door swings open and you get your first glance in there you see the flickering of the green lanterns glinting off of treasure oh so much treasure let me reveal it Oh, oh my goodness. What? Well, this is quite the inheritance. Oh. I reckon if Squall knew this was down here, he wouldn't have given away the deed so easily, huh? Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Just at a glance, how much does... Can we approximate it to be? Let me check. <laughs> Why don't you roll like a, a perception check? Sure. With my superior dark vision. That makes one of us. <laughs> oh, yeah, I got a four. I have no idea. I got a 18. That's 18. 12. Um, let's see. I'll, I'll give you some information. You said 12 yeah. for mm -hmm. Owen and mm -hmm. then 18 for Bert. You hear cash register noises <laughs> coming out of Bert's head. Uh... I'm sorry, it was uh, 11. I can't do math. At least a couple thousand gold pieces. Um, there You see the glint of some platinum as well. Um, that's beyond like gems, and you mm -hmm. see a couple... Uh, signs of a couple items, you know, things poking out in there. Um, there's also uh, over here. There's a treasure chest in. Oh, I can't ping it for some reason. There we go. In one of the corners, um, there's like this old broken stone chair. Nobody knows what that's about, but um, <laughs> my favorite one. There's quite a bit in here beyond it just the money. The <laughs> The one thing I will say, though, for um, Vert and the 18, I need to check some things. Check yes. magic on the chair. Um, Vert, you see movement amongst some of the piles of coins. Just like slight movement. Oh, no. Okay. Like a couple coins shifting here and there. So I think Vert will, like, uh, what's the word? Reflexively, like, pull his arm out to, like, and then, like, and, like, point at the. At the movement quietly mm -hmm. um and then yeah i don't know i'll just like to see if anyone else has a good thing to do for a situation like this um as vert does that charm you hear a creak from behind you uh and you look to see the suit of armor Oh, no. uh, has come to life and is closing the secret bookcase I cast behind spell you. Magic on it. Okay, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> it is closing the secret bookcase behind you and then turning towards you with a wicked looking sword. We're going to have to roll initiative. I thought okay. we were going to have downtime. We will! Sorry. <laughs> it won't take too long. Sorry. No, we're good. no fine. it's totally fine. Oh no. Now I actually do have to prepare spells. <laughs> Uh, and mark the spells that I use. Damn Wait. it. You <laughs> used two levels. I, uh, yeah, two of my second levels I've used. Shit. Let me just quickly edit this encounter because I had torn and night magic. This one. Oh, no. I need to take a long rest. <laughs> I haven't even done that. Okay, let's okay. see. Um, how did Embers do? 50. 15, Elwyn? Uh, 13. 13. Vert? 9. 9. Oh, and Soul Charm? We can just put Soul with you. It's That's fine. Anyway. Yeah, that's fine. 14. Soul also rolled the same anyway, <laughs> so it doesn't matter. Oh, <laughs> I mean, yeah. that always happened with people in there from like... I know. It's like weird. Yako and, and uh, Zant. Uh, Ether okay. and Riot every time. Every time. Um... um would have been a surprise but Bert noticed so it's not a surprise uh, so the first thing that happens is this uh, suit of armor comes over to charm uh, and is going to try and push her into the room so charm I need you to make an athletics or acrobatics check acrobatics. 
You're looking for a 17. Okay, 16. Okay. Uh, Charm gets pushed five feet into the room, and then this thing comes and closes that door behind you. Did it touch oh. the the door that I cast Heat Metal on? Yeah. Because it should take damage. It will. How much damage is it? Um, Any creature in physical contact, blah, 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 when you cast a spell. I'm going to move Soul out of the way so we know Charm is there. Mm-hmm. Actually, I'll just put him on the other side. Oh, it just says, so, okay, you'll have to, you'll have to use your DM judgment. It says, any creature in physical contact with the, with the door, when I cast a spell, takes damage. And until the spell ends, I can use a bonus action on, on I'm going to say it takes this damage. To cause damage. Okay, so it's just 2d8 fire damage and there's no, yep, no save. save. Throw. There's a con save to drop it if it's something held, but okay. Oh, he's metal up. I know. I have to recast it, I think. Oh, that's good. 12 fire damage. Okay. Got it. Oh, wait. Did I say? Yeah, I did say you said 12. Yep. 2D. Yeah. Um, it's gauntlets heat up as it touches the door. You can see them turn red, but it pushes it shut behind you with a thud. Okay. Sealing you in this room. Whoa. Cool. For the time being. Great. Uh, Are we now out of it? Nope. Oh, okay. Embers. Uh huh. No, it's in the room with us. It's in the room with us or outside? It is outside the room. Yeah. Oh, it's. Oh. But there's something else in this room, we think. Yeah. Yeah, Vert's oh, also that, movement oh, that's in the Torrens. corner. Is that Torrens' new token? No, that is. Um, oh, this thing out here? Yeah. That is the um, suit of armor. Oh, the, the door the, shut. okay, that's what I. Okay. okay. Yeah. Then wait, who's. Who's outside the room? The suit of armor. Oh, oh, the door is between us and the suit of armor. Yes. Sorry. I'm like, I can't see a door there. What are you talking about? Yeah, the door is right between you, <laughs> but it's clarified. pretty crowded. Like... I was looking at spells. I'm sorry. That's okay. It's okay. Um, but the thingy my bobber is yeah. in here. here. The torrent pointed toward the thing in the, um, in the in the coins, right? Ver did, yeah. Or, it was yeah. it was sort of over in this direction. All right, I'm gonna yeah, go I'm and trying. try and find that thing. Mm. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I walk over to the um, to this mound of treasure. How do you want to try and find it? Um, perception check. Okay, that'll work. Uh, that's a 24. 24. Yeah. Um, yes, as you step over there and try to, and start to um, check out that pile of coins, mm-hmm. um, you see the same shifting movement uh, that Vert had picked up on, mm-hmm. uh, and you realize that, you know, one of your feet is kind of like on this pile of coins, and you realize that the entire pile of coins is actually a creature. Oh. Oh. As a horde mimic appears. <laughs> oh no! This entire pile of coins is a cohesive creature that you are now stepping on. Okay. And I was just looking at them to see if they have the stickiness, and I don't think they do. Okay. I don't think I've ever fought a mimic before. Um, mm-hmm. I'm going to spend a key point to dodge. That's my bonus action. Oh, in your thing. Do my hags have it for them? I, yeah. yep. Harmony didn't participate in that fight. I don't think Harmony was a Yeah, and I just call out to the rest. Uh, there's less treasure here than we think, and get from the fighting <laughs> stance. Uh, charm. This thing is reacting to Embers. I, I'm going to say that now that Embers has kind of pointed it out, you can see this pile of coins kind of starting to shift and move into like various pseudopods. Um, you can tell that there is a creature that Embers is partially stepping on. Okay, so I think what I'm going to do is charm. Charm is going to cast a web on top of it. Okay. Uh, what kind of save is that for it? Does it make a save? It is. It makes it uh, difficult to rain. How big is the web again? It's, um, 
a 20 foot cube of honey. <laughs> 20 yeah. foot of honey. Every creature that starts its turn or enters it must make a dex save. Um, I put it on top of embers, but I guess you probably don't want it to get embers. Right. So I will move it if I, if I can manage to move this thing. There we go. You can just web up this area and not get embers. Okay. And you said it's a dex save? Mm -hmm. DC 14. Oh, natural one. <laughs> it is webbed. So is it restrained or just... It's restrained, restrained. Okay. Um, Very good. on a fail. Uh, yeah, this horde mimic as it's starting to come to... It's starting to animate. It gets just covered in webs of honey. <laughs> Very good. We don't have to worry about it for a while. Uh, anything else for charm? If not, it's Elwyn. Okay. Um, was there anything else in the room moving, or was it just that one? Just thing? this one thing. Okay. Um. Shoot. <laughs> I uh, was prepared to do a thing, and now you guys have render that unnecessary so i think i will end the concentration on the heat metal because i don't know i mean we we obviously are going to want to be pushing that door open yeah to get out me i have no idea what i'm doing i'm sorry <laughs> okay sorry. all of my plans um yeah i guess i'll just Sorry. Um... The music is it's good, though. Yeah. The webs are yeah. flammable, by the way. Yep. But doesn't that destroy the webs? Yes. Could be fun, though. <laughs> uh... Does it look like the... Nah, we'll just do a good old frost fingers, I think. Okay. At this pile of gold. Um, it's from me in a 15 foot cone, so I'm going to have to probably have to get a, a little closer. Yeah. Let's see. I like that there's some guy on this token. Yeah, right? <laughs> I tried to clip it so there yeah. wasn't, but he was there no matter yeah. what. Like there? Uh, yeah, that could 15 foot cone. And then, wait, I don't. I just don't want to get embers. You Can could... I stand? On this square, or is that a pillar? Uh, it's a pillar. You could, you could stand on it. It's fine. Okay. And then, oh wait, no, I'd still be you getting covered. You can sit in the chair. Yeah, you could <laughs> go on the... in the chair. Well, it's 15 foot cone, right? But if I do it here, straight forward, yep, then it won't then Embers is good. Okay. Yeah, then I will come over here and just... Um, actually, I might come over here. Because that'll still hit it. One... To... Yeah, but that would, that would get embers in the cone, wouldn't it? No, it wouldn't, right? Because it, it does, um, like, to here and here and here, right? But it, So it goes five foot... Gosh, I hate, I hate cones. cones. <laughs> Why did you give me a thing that does a cone? I don't know. We have this yeah. argument every time I so try to use it. it. It would go like this, right? Though I guess you could aim it so the cone goes this way into the wall. And that's fine. I was going to aim it straight forward. I can't see your pointer. You're doing something. You can't see can my you not pointer. see my pointer? Oh, you I can't see, see my pointer. Yeah, you're... I, I saw it. That's weird. Oh. No, do, you, do you have it selected so that you there. can't not to show other people? Or are you on the wrong layer? Oh, uh, I haven't seen it. It's showing up on, on That's mine. mine. That's, I was yeah. on the GM layer. What? There we go. That was my oh, layer. Yeah, that's why, yeah. The red one's me. Oh, so okay. normally I think a cone would go like this, but you could angle it so it goes this way instead, and it would still hit the mimic, and that's fine. Okay. So the point I is, mean, you're yeah. you're fine here. Okay. It's I didn't think it was like this. I thought it was like one, and then like yeah, one, one out, her, and then like three out, here, three, and three here. But yeah, okay. The cones are stupid. Well, I'm gonna angle great it when I'm not here. Yeah, I'm gonna angle it so I don't hit embers. Yeah, you can do that. That's fine. Just by going this way and just hit instead. the mimic. Um, so that's 
cross fingers. Uh, constitution save. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty decent at these, but I rolled a 7 cool, for a failed. total of, well, plus a bonus for 13. I think that still, yeah, that fails. Very good. So it's going to take 10 cold damage. Average. Mm, thank you. This is just a cold. It's good. Yeah, you can see your frost licks the thing and it seems to recoil from it. And Ooh, I didn't give it HP up there. Yeah, I might pretty certain that there's no other thing in this room. Um, for at least for the moment, yeah. You said seven damage? Ten. Okay. Right. Yeah, I just kind of want to glance behind me at the other piles of gold and check for movement and then Yeah, you don't you don't see anything. Okay. Then I think I'll just let's see, I moved one, five, ten, fifteen, twenty. And I'll just finish my movement and back up a little bit and just get away. Okay. Sorry for the long, boring turn. I had something cool planned, but, you know. Uh, uh, next up is Vert. I go first this time. With my action, I'm going to step into my armor because I wasn't wearing it. With the bonus action, I will use uh, defensive field to give myself temporary hit points. So you'll see, like, the shield part of the armor kind of light up, hum to life. And I get five temp HP, and then I will use my movement. I can't have Soul do anything because I've used my bonus action, but I can move myself. So I'm gonna move. Soul's gonna be next to the ceiling. Oops, uh, but he's gonna come over here. Oh my gosh! Sorry, everybody. Okay. And then I'm gonna move down here. Maybe in front of Elwyn. Hi. Hello. You normally get yourself in precarious positions, so maybe I'll try and... <laughs> like a literal meat shield. Shield you a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Yeah. a little bit. That's my turn. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can I not have my HP please? Uh, then it is its turn. You guys so are again. nicely spread out, which is good. There. Hmm. Well, it will try to grab at embers. I think you see um, a mouth opens up in it. It's just like kind of a cavernous maw that has these like spiky teeth protrusions as coins just kind of fall off of that. Great. Uh, and a big tongue lashes out and then pseudopods of coins uh, will try to grab embers because embers is, I guess, right there. Yeah. Um, I think I get two of these. Yeah, two. So I'll do one against Vert and one against Embers. Cool. All right. The one against me, well, both of them, I guess, are at disadvantage. Yeah, that's true, because we're strong. Uh, the one against Embers is a 18. Uh, yep, that's my C. Okay, and then the one against Vert is, uh, wow, two nines on the dice, uh, 17. Misses. Can't hit Vert. Just like, just like Hunter. Who's that? Uh, yeah, who's that? Um, so Embers, you take uh, 12 bludgeoning damage. Okay. And it adheres to you, so here's where the stickiness comes in. Uh, you count as grappled by it, okay. and Am I until the grapple ends, you're also restrained. Also restrained. Yep. Great. Ability checks made to escape this grapple at disadvantage. I guess that's because it's sticky. Mm. Yep, makes sense, makes sense. Okay. Uh, and then, since it's got you, it will also bite you. If it was restrained. So, how can it do all this if it was restrained? Well, it had disadvantage on its attacks. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And it's disadvantage, but advantage because you're restrained. Yeah, we're, so we're, restra we're both restrained. Flat roll. It's not very good. Uh, that's a 6 uh, plus okay. or 14. Nope, nice. Yep. It's like restraining, or yeah. you're, you're pushing back against its mouth as it tries to bite. Okay, uh, back up to the top with Charm. Or no, Embers, sorry. Am I at 40? You are. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 15. All right, um, I'm going to burn another key point to do four melee attacks. <laughs> um, I'll let flat rolls, because, yep. again, we're both restrained. Yeah. What a sad fight this is becoming. <laughs> Very strange. Yeah. Um, does a 12 hit? 12 does not. Okay. Let me make sure. Checking some stuff. Okay, 12 doesn't hit. I'm reasonably sure everything else hits. Because the lowest of the other was a 27. Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, yeah. or, no, no. Wow. Uh, sorry, sorry. That's not true. 23. Oh, yeah. Okay. 
Uh, so, that'll do. Like, by a lot. <laughs> yeah, 23 and then higher than 23 for the others. So, oh, there are all three. That's weird. Uh, so I will do. Um, twenty-four blood and heat damage. Okay. I... Yeah, you're just pummeling this thing, and it's mm-hmm. like it's like whipping you around with the pseudopod as you do. Mm-hmm. Uh, good turn, charm. Okay. Charm's going to move closer and get out the longbow and make three attacks. Well, you don't have to move closer if you don't want to with the longbow. Oh, I'm sorry. I want short sword. Short, short sword. sword. <laughs> Long short. I'm going to walk right up to it and pull I'm out my long you. <laughs> um, Point blank. Where about do you want to be? Do you want to be above embers, beside embers? Um, let's go to the north. Very Love good. the marsh. Did it hit me for um, one square oil damage? Jeez. Yeah. One, one more. No. Oh, if you go yeah. this way, you're in the webs. Oh, okay. Okay, so then... Back you oh, you can't see my webs. They're on... <laughs> oh, yeah. gosh. Sorry. Layer. Layer is always layer. Oh, okay. There we go. Uh, yeah. I wondered if that was That's a me problem okay. or... No, no, no. It's uh, yeah. I was on the wrong layer when I was drawing problem. Every, uh, every DM's okay. nightmare. Well, yeah. actually, let's go get on that other problem money then and be a little bit lower. Okay. Like kid yeah, corner to Bert. Yeah. Looks good. Yep. Okay, so three short sword attacks. Well, you're also kitty corner to Embers, which is just great. Ooh. Meow. Dangerous. Meow. You're basically a clouder. <laughs> Almost a chowder. Almost. Yeah. <laughs> when is that 20? Oh. oh uh, you do have advantage on these as well, because it's restrained. Yeah. Okay, so I'll roll again. So that one would be a 16, and that one would be only a 9, so that misses. So we'll keep the nat 20 and roll two more. Another nat 20! Oh, snap! <laughs> and that's a 3, which misses. Is this a Vorpal Sword? Blech. How many Cut attacks off the do you get? Uh, 3. 3? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so she has... 2 nat 20s and 2... Oh, one I see. She has the well, offhand you ability. You roll 3 so, dice twice, yeah. I see. Yeah, so uh, two nat 20s is what I got. Yeah. I mean, geez. Tell me the damage. Okay. Um, so that's 1d6 plus 3. So that's... Uh, Ooh, 12, 15, 16, 17, 19. 19 points of damage. Okay. Wait, isn't that... That's two hits, so it's... I think it's 20, 22. Oh, because you got a oh, bonus. Oh, plus another one. three. Yeah. yeah. No, no. Yeah. She got it. 22. She okay. restrained it. Well, like, that's fine. Okay. She has your spells on. She will go, but I don't use uh, Anything spell. else for charming? And then anyway. I get to use, since I attacked it, I get to use my creature. Yeah. 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 What should we have them do? We'll fight with that. Him, how much? He was down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I said, no, it's make fine. them. I was like, I was like, show one. Do the extra damage. Is Big Bun coming? Yeah, let's just do the extra damage. It's just one Big Buzz. Yeah, Big Buzz. Big Buzz. Big Big Buzz. Big Buzz. <laughs> Technically, Big Bun was, um... <laughs> oh, another Did six. Another... Yeah. He's on fire tonight. Yeah. Max damage. No, so I'm gonna crits. just. I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna leave the encounter and let Charm. I know just we can just be. Like, are, you don't have this, yeah. right? Well, let's go try to open the door. Do yeah. They do. Or, I think they just do the same type as the weapon. Slash. Oh, 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 piercing. Oh, I mean, piercing. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Yeah, the bee comes in and stings it good right on the tongue. <laughs> and then, um, I'm if I have any movement left, I'm gonna move uh, to the right a little bit. The rest okay. of my movement. Oh, the in whole the chair. You, no. want go, you want to go to the chair? What is up with the shivers? <laughs> Not yet. Like this far? Or... Yeah, that's fine. Oh. Thank you. You don't leave it start range, so you're good. Uh, okay. Then, great turn for charm. Elwyn. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, how, how are you looking, Embers? I'm pretty good, actually. And it's a 
I did not prepare well for this. I think I'll just frostbite it. Okay. With the con save again. A natural one. Failure. Great. So you get two. That's a lot of natural ones tonight already. D6 of more cold damage, and you have disadvantage on its next weapon attack roll. It's already got disadvantage on everything. Right That's now true. Because it was screened. So. Uh, cool. Ten more cold damage. That's real good, though. That's good. <laughs> roll ten uh, on two d8 and ten on two d6. That's great. Revert. And then oh, hold on. Forward. Sorry. <laughs> Classic Ethan mistake. I still have a bonus action. I'm sorry. Which. Yeah, why not? I'll throw a first level healing word on you, Ambrose, because sure. I have I appreciate the spells for it. And I saw you got whacked, so here we go. Oops. Cool. Four plus four. Eight. Eight HP back. Maximum on damage. And yeah, she'll just, as she's casting Frostbite and this thing is like icing over in parts. Mm -hmm. Elwyn's like, are you are you good? Do you need help getting out of there? Because I'm not going to get any closer, but... I've got it right where I want. Okay. Hang in there. <laughs> we believe in you. <laughs> okay, now vote start. Uh, well, I have movement. <laughs> where are you going, Elwyn? <laughs> I'm going to stay there. <laughs> you troll! So, I have a question. If I had an eraser, I'd kill it. I deserve that. Um, so I asked you, Ethan, I think, I don't know, some months ago about certain books that we can use spells from, and one spell is called Vortex Fork. I've so, never heard of this, but... Okay. It's from, like, it, it might be from, like, Eberron or something. Oh. I don't remember what book it's from. I can check real quick. It's S-A-C-O-C. -C. What's that? Strixhaven Academy uh, Curriculum of Chaos. Yeah, I think yeah. yeah, it's that one. Oh yeah, it's from Strixhaven. Is that um, okay? Yeah, that's or, fine. Okay, they don't just say Strixhaven. Yeah. Strixhaven's fine. Anyways, <laughs> I was D &D. going to, if it's okay, D &D &D -D. use that spell, cast Vortex Warp on Embers, to put <laughs> <Yeah>. her <laughs> basically a like oh, still oh. next to the enemy, but get her out of the restraint. Oh, I see. Yeah, totally. So you can choose to fail this and oh, okay. be warped. Sweet. Okay, so I'll say, Embers, I'm going to get you out of there, and then Vortex Warp. Oh, this is a cool spell. And huh? you can choose pretty much anywhere in this field where you want to be. Okay. Um, it's, uh, let me see. It's like 90 feet range. Yeah, it's 90 so, feet. So, yeah, anywhere so, in this room where you want to be. Yeah. Do you have to see the target? So it says, the target must... Okay. Teleport to an unoccupied space of your choice that you can see within range. That you can see, okay. That's so you can't, you can't put me on the other side of the door? No. Okay, gotcha. Uh, put me at the door, then. Okay, I'll put you at the door. Boop. Wow. That's such a cool spell. Okay. Yeah. And uh, that's my action. So from there, I will, I wow, guess, so. step <laughs> forward one more. Put myself in a precarious position, and I will have Soul use a Force Bolt on... Oh my god, please. Okay, thank you. It's like staying on the health bar for some reason. I always have to pull up souls. I need to make him like a pet or something so I can just quickly. Add him to your I, do. Yeah, you can I, add extra extra I didn't even think about that. That's so. not bother doing it. I have Torin. Yeah, that's my pet. He's not our pet, he's a person. <laughs> he's listed as a sidekick okay. character. Like, Torin's upstairs, like loudly Sneezing. training in, in one of the rooms. That checks out. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I'm going to take advantage on this because he's still restrained, right? Mm hmm. Force bolt that is oh an eighteen plus some stuff hits okay and then force strike one d four plus proficiency that is one plus three so average so you have to put average four damage okay um this thing's turn uh it now that it is no longer has to try and bite embers. Points its mouth towards Vert, Charm, and Elwyn, mm -hmm. and oh, no. you put us in the line. Oops. Breathes, and uh, this 
greenish mist comes out of its mouth going 30 feet down the chamber. Um, it'll hit all three of you. Mm -hmm. uh, and I need a... Wow, weirdly it's a dexterity saving throw. Cool. The one person who's good at these is absent. I rolled natural one. Okay. Ten. Right. See? <laughs> I, could do this. I could do this thing I've never done yeah, before. It looks like a 20 to me. Oh, the, the normal charm. Yeah, yeah 14. 14. Okay. Um, charm is the only one who succeeds. Uh, dirty 20, yeah. Uh, everyone else takes 27 acid okay. damage. Oof. Uh, let's see, on a successful I'm take, down. you take half. So that is 13. Um, does Vert go down too? Nope. I'm immediately okay. down. Then Vert is also blinded. Uh, Charm, you just take the 13 and are not blinded. Let me check something real quick. I was looking for this thing that I might be able to do. Um... I feel like that's a very artificial statement. <laughs> <laughs> One second here. Uh, there he is. There's Nihadon. Ooh. So... I've never done this before, but I think it's like once per long rest I can auto-succeed something. Let me see. Pretty sure, isn't that a death saving throw? Is it only a death save? I thought I it was. So. Let's see. Uh, add the number to the saving throw. Okay, never mind. So I don't want to do that. Okay. Oh, yeah, it's auto succeed death. Okay, I see. And then everything else is... Okay, nope, not doing that. Because I rolled in that one, so uh, not going to save that one. Okay. So 27 damage? 27, yeah. Oh, that was exactly lethal for Elwyn, wasn't it? Was it was exactly Elwyn's HP. Oof. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that is its turn, though. Uh, Embers. Okay. Embers rushes right back in. It's going to attack it four more times. Uh, now I've got actual advantage on these. Yes, you do. But no longer drained. Let's see, I got 20. Yes. That's a 25. Uh, it's a 21. Mm -hmm. Oh, um, how about a 15? Yep. Yeah. Okay, so all of them hit, and one of them hits twice. Yeah, bad rolls. 30 damage. This thing is starting to look rough. It's <laughs> no, it's, it's looking quite rough at this point. Yeah. Uh, it's like having trouble concentrating on its coin-like form. Like, you can see the more and more of the coins are, like, you know, kind of sinking back into its skin and, like, it's it's losing concentration on its disguise as it is dying. All right, that's the end of my turn. Okay. Uh, Charm. Charm will quickly rush over to Ellen and put her. Hand. As you leave its threat range, it grabs for you. At disadvantage. At disadvantage. Uh, Nineteen to hit. We'll do it, that. Uh, so that is 12 bludgeoning damage, and it sticks to you. Oops. Gross. Um, so I can't move? move. He's nope. He's yeah. Well, I was going to try to carry you. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Ooh, that's a 'm mm -hmm. pretty sure that's just the Chromecast. Yeah, yeah, should yeah. Be, the audio should be fine. Yeah, it should be. Yeah. Okay. So what are you doing? Come on, it's still your turn. Uh, you still have action, movement. Yeah. Not really um, movement, though. Not really movement. No movement, but I can um, attack it still. Yeah. Technically, it's holding you at arm's length, but you could still hack at its arm. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Yeah. Like, technically, I think with the rules, you probably can't attack it right now, but you can attack it right now. 
with the arm is grabbing you. Did you roll concentration on web? Sorry. Yep. How much damage did you take? Oh, just 12. Oh, yeah. You're good, I think. Yes, 17. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So I, I need to write down my damage, too. Someone needs to update the token, too. Oh, you're right. Um, you're the only you're the only goody two shoes who is updating the <laughs> token. It's kind of a pain. I am. Keeps, yeah. I need to play keyboard. The keyboard's behind the thing. Oh, I'm just. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> should we decide I can, I can make an attack turn or should mm -hmm. I cast yeah. a spell? You could also cast a spell if you wanted. Thanks. No one's tried it yet. I didn't think we need it. We're just going to be doing downtime. Mage Hand does have to go that way. Wait, Mage Hand can go 30 feet? Mm hmm. But I can't yep. cast a, a, a spell through it to yeah. cure her. That wouldn't work. That'd be really cool. Yeah. Here, here. That'd be really cool. Yeah. Idea for possible future items. Okay. Could I try a. Kinetic shove to break the grapple? Sure. What does it need to do? Is it a save on its part? Uh, strength save. DC 14. Can you shove a creature that's larger than you? Thank you. This is a, kind of a special one. It did roll high enough that I think the point is moved, though. Um, yeah, 17 plus 5. Okay. That was bonus action, so I still have my action. Mm hmm. Okay. Oh. Boy, this thing is gross. Okay. I'm going to. Say it's, it's just a. Uh, I'm gonna try to chop off its arm to get another short sword. Okay. Do I get the three or just the two? You can do all. Well, just the two. No, just the two because I use my bonus action. Yep. Okay. And it's neither advantage nor disadvantage. Okay. You're both restrained. Okay. One. It's twelve plus six, eighteen. The other one misses. This, but it does yeah. it 18 hit? The 18 hits for sure. Okay. And because it hit, the B gets to the B's attack too. Oh, another six. Big bones. Okay. <laughs> so that is nine damage. Mm -hmm. And let's roll this one again since it's so nice. And another four. Another four. Uh, the B stings it right in the right in the maw again. Mm -hmm. It's hanging in there, but just barely. Okay. Your sword, sword, sword goes like three quarters of the way through the. Is it two regular attacks? Tentacle that's holding it. Yes. Oh, but you missed one. Yeah, I missed one. Mm -hmm. Uh, Elwyn, death saving throw. <laughs> that's an eight. Eight. Oh no. <laughs> Should be fine. It's, like it's, almost, it's almost down. Uh, sure. Bert. I'm blind. Yeah, so, so you don't even know what happened to Owen. No, I don't know what's happening right now. So yep. I'm like wiping my eyes and then I'm going to just take very defensive actions. I'm going to recast defensive barrier on myself to get temp, temp HP. And I'm also going to cast um, mirror image on myself as well. Okay. Spell slot. And then that's it. That's all I can do. All right. And the blindness ends at the end of your turn. Great. Okay. Uh, it gets, it lives for one more turn! Okay. Um, okay, we'll, we'll do one pseudopod on embers, one on vert, and it will try and chomp on charm. Yeah, I was gonna cast magic pistol, but you have to see the target, and I'm like, yeah. I can't do anything to it right now. <laughs> Alright, so disadvantage against embers. Yep. That's gonna miss. It was only a 14. Disadvantage against vert. Well, then you will see which one. Um, if it hits, I believe. 20 total. Uh, miss. Of course it does. And it will try and chomp charm with a flat roll. 
Yeah. Yeah. Useless last turn. Oh, and I should have. I got the mist back. I could have done the mist again. No, no. That's okay. <laughs> That's fine. All right, embers. All right, I'm going to go three attacks to start with because I might kill it. If I need a fourth, I can burn that point, but we'll see. Um, let's see. A 16 hits, right? Oh, yeah. You can even just do that one if you want. Yeah, that one also hits. And it's also hits. So. You can roll the damage if you want, but it's dead. Okay. <laughs> Did I have one HP left? I had four. Okay. Yeah, I do weigh more than four. Okay. Yep. How does it go down? <sighs> um. Does this thing have a heart? Sure. Yeah, I think Ember is finally, like, like, not even doing bludgeoning damage, like using her claws to like dig into the center of it, and just finally reaches in. And just, yeah, it's it's this like big black organ thing. You're down. You're fine. Yeah. Well, I am. I'm not here for that. In your claw, it pulses I once or you twice more. <laughs> no, I failed the death save because I was like, oh god. Oh, all the blood. <laughs> I don't want to see this. <laughs> yeah. Better off dying. <laughs> and now we can be out of initiative. Work. Okay, and then. I guess noticing Owen's down, I'll rush over and get her cure wounds. Um, well, I mean, I mean Charm, I Charm could go for it, yeah. Oh, if exactly. Charm gets to her first, then no need for doing another death save. Yeah, it depends. Charm is first in initiative, so she'd technically beat you, uh, too. Does Charm Maybe. rush to Owen, or...? Of course, yeah. But my turn was before yours, mm -hmm. so I'd have to roll another death save if mm -hmm. it was going to So, 1d8 plus yeah. something. What? Get a one. Must be eight. terrible. With my, with my luck, yeah. You can roll it just to find out. <laughs> Only five, sorry. That, I mean, it's fine if we're out of initiative. Yeah. If Elwyn rolled a one, there would have been a revivify scroll in this room, I guarantee you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not killing a player on this throwaway encounter. <laughs> you know, I was thinking the first round when... when Charm was like, she couldn't get to me to heal me. I was like, I can roll one death save and be fine. But if I have to roll a second death save and I failed one, I'm going to die. <laughs> like, someone better heal me. I tried. I know. I don't have a... I need to get the voice one. The voice? The uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. One well, you don't have to touch. Um, anyway, but I'm up. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. The room is quiet and still again. Just the flickering of the green lights. But the door is still, we're still locked in here. Door's still closed. Yeah. I'm going to use my bonus action to raise my visor. Very <laughs> <laughs> Iron Man. Yeah. Are there any more of those things in here? I didn't see any. Oh. No. I don't think so. I had a feeling that suit of armor was going to be trouble. Sharper than we are. We all, we all got gold blinded. <laughs> well, big dollar signs so, in our eyes. Um, is Charm able to telepathically telepathically talk to Torin? What? <laughs> telepathically Are you okay, talk Melissa? to Torin. <laughs> I have not been drinking. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, that's what they all say. Torin close to that for me. What's what's your range? I think it's one twenty. Um, yeah. I mean, there's there's a lot of stone in the way, but if you're not affected by that, then yeah. So, uh, so Charm will say, Hey, Torin, can you help us out down here? There's a suit of armor that came alive down in the pantry. What? <laughs> alive? Huh? In, in the pantry? Yeah, we're stuck in a room, uh, and he's outside the door. Yeah, you hear, like, from, from where you are, um, you hear, like, the pounding of feet on the floors <laughs> above you. As someone rushes, <laughs> um, then from sort of like over in you know the the far left corner of the room, you hear the sound of someone stumbling down a ladder. You hear um, like <laughs> heavy grunts and pulling, and then you hear the sound of like splintering wood as the bookcase door is pulled off <laughs> its hinges oh. entirely. Uh, uh. And then you hear a shout, "Hey, you!" <laughs> And then it's just the clanging of metal on the other side of the door. 
Uh, and that goes on for about a minute. Is there a way, <laughs> while that's happening, for us to get this door this door open from the inside? Uh, yeah, you want to, when that starts, do you want to try and push it open? Yeah. Okay. We don't have to roll the encounter, but once uh, once that inca- once Torrent starts fighting the thing on the other side, um, you can just push this thing open. The thing was just kind of holding it shut on oh, the other okay. side. Oh, well, he would have been taken. Well, I guess I dropped you, him. You dropped it. Yeah. Early. I was gonna factor that in, but yeah. Um, and you can just see Torin doing battle with this thing, um, and yeah, the group of you all together can make short work of it. Okay. Mm. Well. And, and then Torin finally looks around. At the surroundings, uh, and just kind of goes slack jawed. I reckon we ought to wow. figure out. I mean, this is like Lord Mr. Last inheritance. Yeah. Does he have any next to kin that this would rightfully? I think they said no. Mm-hmm. That's, I mean, that's why, why we have the, that's why we the, have the, the deed. Key, but I don't know. It doesn't feel right to me to keep this for ourselves. Well, I Unless think we it, put it back into the town. Or something. I think it, I think it does, and it's something I want to talk to you all about. Yeah. I feel like what we're doing here in Amberhearth is eventually going to be carrying on Lord Mister Let's work. And what what work was that? Well, he died defending the city from the Empire, right? Sure. What are we doing? That's the question, isn't it? Yeah. So, if we can put it to seed money to start hiring new members, maybe we can train up some people, teach them how to do good. Remember, we, I mean, we got to start fighting a griffin of threatening a town. That's true. There might be some local locals around here who have metal like us. Sure, sure. I don't disagree with what you're saying, Embers, but I, I don't know if we shouldn't report this to the council at least. I mean, if they didn't know about it when Mr. Olaf was alive, I'm kind of siding with Embers on this one. I mean, is it our right to just take the money for our, ourselves? I don't see how it could belong to anyone else. Yeah, would you rather the wardens take it from us? No, well, I definitely don't want it to go into their hands. Yeah. Or text. Find out. Figure there's a reason Lord Mishnath is hiding all this behind a secret door in his unbreakable hall. I don't know, not having met Lord Mishnath when he was alive, I'm a little hesitant to lay claim to anything that belonged to him. Well, we're living in this house. Well, but. (laughs) Why don't we take a look and see? Maybe there's a note he left behind in here, too. Knowing that he didn't have mm. any next of kin, like a will or something. Exactly. Yeah. And then maybe there's a maybe there's a reason why we do keep right. it not check that chest for traps. Yeah, I can do that. And the chair. Let's check. I'll the check chair. the chair for traps. <laughs> All right. Investigation check. <laughs> I can't even. Well, you know, can just everybody roll or like? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, sure. I can also I can enhance ability one more time if you want it. Uh. I mean, my investigation's plus four, so... Anyway. Really oh, I, I rolled a nat 20 in my investigation. Oh, snap. So, so 20, 23, of the room. I'm not okay, looking at the right. chair. I will look just the cha- the at the room. The chair is beyond me. <laughs> beyond all of looking that. at the room in general. Although I was playing. Yeah, okay. That's, um... <laughs> five. Five? Ooh, five. right next to me. I got a six. Oh, boy. Oh, snap. <laughs> yeah, uh, 21. Shoot. 21? Um, of course, in our own little world right now. Elwyn, Elwyn, and Charm Elwin are fairly. Died again. Or sorry, not Elwyn. Uh, Embers and Charm are fairly certain that there's no more traps in this room. That chest doesn't look trapped. Um, now that you've defeated the the guardian of the room and the uh, the one holding the door shut on the outside, it seems like you're pretty much in the clear. Okay. Um, and as you start to sort through these things, do you just want an inventory of what's here? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Someone get ready to record. <laughs> yeah. Okay. There are 400 copper pieces, 6,000 silver pieces, 3,200 gold pieces, 120 platinum pieces. But each of these coins is a little bit interesting. They're not shaped circular. Um, 
though they feel about like they have the same like heft and, and like amount of gold and platinum to them as regular coins um they are shaped <clears throat> kind of like moths or butterflies mm. uh, and they're stamped with elven visages they're not like minted stration empire coins um paper currency there uh, are also eight ge uh, gems of various types, which are worth 100 gold pieces each. Um, and then then there's some magic -y items you find. Um, there is like a... Um, hold on, I gotta, I gotta look something up in my notes. Which... Okay, there is like a a crystalline chalice of some kind, like a bottle, more like a bottle than a, than a cup, um, that kind of has some brass de detailings to it. Um, that seems to be magic-y. There... One of us has identified. Um, she said, looking at the ones on chats from the group. There is something that Elwyn finds uh, buried under the coins. With a no, what, a five? <laughs> it just makes sense that Elwyn is the one that finds this. <laughs> Maybe someone else finds it, but you're the one who knows what it is. Okay. Um, there is like a set of chain armor, but instead of being made with metal, it's made with glowing fairy crystal. Uh, it is, I'll tell you, because you've seen these uh, back in uh, your home in the Oasis. Uh, this is a set of elven chain, but it's made with fairy crystal. Mm. Um, there is a gem that glows brightly, it seems to have some magic to it. There's the mysterious chair, which is just kind of like a mm -hmm. uh, broken and cracked stone throne. Um, but there's like some arcane runes at the bottom of it. <gasps> Cheers, magic. Um, it doesn't seem to be like emanating any magic at the moment, but it was probably magic once. Okay. Um, the chest in the far uh, side of the room hangs underneath a painting of sort of like a starry night sky. Uh, and inside it is what looks like a seed, um, like a large seed, but it is a greenish crystal-like substance. Um, unsure what that is. Uh, but also in the chest with it, there is a uh, stash of refined fairy crystal that glows with um, with energy. Uh, finally, let's see. Uh, you finally find what you've been looking for in the form of some encrypted correspondences and documentation and yeah. journals. Um, a quick page through, they're tough to make sense of because they are they do seem to be encrypted somehow. Um, but you could probably crack that code with some work. Okay. Or some helpful work. Mm, yeah. From a certain mental resident. <laughs> um, And that is it. That's the contents of the room. So, just for clarification, so you and I are on the same page. Finding fairy crystal outside of Alveria is weird. extremely weird. Extremely weird. Okay. Just to put that out there for everyone yeah. here to know, too. Ellen reacts a little bit strangely to finding fairy crystal. The other thing that I need, um, now that you know what all is in there, is... Um, they're just like a history check for Bert. Okay. History. Hmm. So that's sixteen. Okay. Um. The the sort of like crystal bottle type mm. thing with like the brass um, kind of outlines to it uh, is familiar to you. Okay. Uh, it's something that you saw at one point uh, in the treasures of your home. 
Oh. It's one of Bogma's treasures. I see. So, uh, for a while, like, Kaga says, like, that can't be. I think it is, and he'll just, like, look at it. And you hear the voice of Nyadon kind of rumble in the back oh, of no. your head. I recognize that vessel. Do I recognize that vessel, no, I'm, if I'm holding it, or if I spend time with it, kind of? Um, yeah, I mean, as you as you hold it and look at it, um, you obviously have the, the memory of seeing it within your father's treasure stores. Mm -hmm. Um... But Nyadon kind of fills in some gaps for you and says, sure. I remember your father is still within the container. Passed that to an ally, a friend, a hobgoblin man, I believe. Ah. Let's see. I believe it once lay in the horde of the dragon Ardalir. Mm. And now it finds itself here. And then Nidon kind of rumbles back to silence. I see. Okay. But what is it? Hmm. Okay, yeah. Um <clears throat> with Nidon's help you can recall that as well. So we'll do this okay. one without any sort of need to identify. Nihon has pretty good stats. So it is very... it is a dragon vessel. Dragon vessel? Mm-hmm. Okay. And um, so that is, it's what's called a horde item. Horde. Um, they're kind of tied to dragon hordes, and they can power up to different levels in different ways, and I can send you the info on that later. Don't we already have one of those? You do. It's it's the right? Yeah. Uh, uh, this one is in the slumbering state at the moment. Okay. Um, as a bonus action, if the vessel is empty, you can speak the command word to fill the vessel with one of the following of your choice. Ale, olive oil, a potion of healing, or a potion of climbing. Oh, oh shit. wow, that's yeah. awesome. Mm. That's so cool. Why don't you ever use it for olive oil? Right? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Why wouldn't we always use it for olive oil? I mean, it's not mayonnaise. Think right? about it. Yeah. Think about it. <laughs> um, <laughs> once the property is used, it can't be used until the next dawn. Is it, no, it's okay. just like regular cooking olive oil, right? Yes. Like... It's not special olive oil. <laughs> <laughs> um, and as as the thing awakens, uh, you know, getting its levels, it oh, can, no, there's more the things you can put in This is the olive oil thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is the no! Okay, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, okay. As it kind of levels up, there's more <laughs> potions that yeah. you can uh -huh. uh, That's amazing. fill this thing with. <laughs> so, ale, olive oil, potions of healing, and wet potions, potions of climbing. Yeah. Cool. It's Very basically cool. one of those per day. Huh. It's like we needed a potion of climbing before we attack the ants. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, if only, man. If only you well, knew what that's said anything. Before. It's okay. <laughs> we figured it out. That's really funny, though. But why would she have to think about that? She doesn't huh? need anything like that. That's true. Well, we didn't know, right? So it's just... The discovery okay, now anyway, is kind of like, so. that's great. It would have been nice before, but we figured it out. There's no, yeah. no problem. It's fine. It's fine. Okay, awesome. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. Is it? Does it require attunement, or is it just? It does require attunement. Okay. Yes. Is there an item? It is. Yeah, you can just search dragon vessel. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Now you've inventoried your treasure. <laughs> what do you want to do? Do I know what refined fairy crystal is used for? Um, building things. It it basically uh, becomes like a very sturdy material. Uh, so it's not really surprising that it's been used in a set of armor here. Um, it also has some kind of, I mean, like latent magicness <laughs> to it. Um, so I mean, it can be it can be used. Probably by like a wizard or something. It could be used for various purposes. The most common thing you see with it in Alveria is building materials, right? right? It becomes a very sturdy building material. Okay, so this is likely used for the chainmail and then left over to mm -hmm. tinker with or whatever. Yep, and it is it is elven chain that Elwyn can equip if she wants. Yeah, I see. I see you raising your eyebrows. <laughs> <laughs> He's very good <laughs> to 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 raise her pitiful AC. Sure. 
We can get on Zilf's level. Zilf's got overchain. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we don't know what this gem does, this brightly glowing gem. Uh, Torin, who's basically just been like looking around the room, just in awe of pretty much everything. Uh, Torin goes, "Hey, if we don't know what any of that stuff is, maybe we could take it to Nadia." Oh, sure. That stuff, as in, what are the things we don't know? Well, the the gem, the seed, yeah, the seed, and the um, well, the chair, but it's not working anymore. What are the uh, runes written in? Can we decipher the language? Uh, it Elven. Like, it's Elven. I mean, oh, it's so... not really language, but it'd, it'd be like magic runes magic based runes. on Elven. I mean, I kind of studied that. Yeah. In school, it would be more. Like an it'd be more the expertise of. Your ex boyfriend. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I we were in class together. Yeah, he just was better at it than me. And I'm not trained in Arcana. None of y'all are. Yeah. Isn't that weird? <laughs> it is weird. I swear I was, but it doesn't. You matter. could train with Nadia with downtime if you wanted to. That would take a long take time, though, weeks. right? Um, minus your minus. intelligence modifier. Yeah. I mean, I would do that with plus four. So, yeah, so it would take you six weeks. You could you yeah. can start that whenever you want. We'll do a longer downtime thing later. Anyway, we can always bring it to Nadia. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So yeah, I guess if we're thinking that's what we want to do, um, I'll uh, I'll go ahead and like write down the runes just so we can make them here, like runes with these symbols. Um, and then so you said we briefed through those documents as well yeah they're all like encrypted though okay so then i can spend some time cracking the code yeah mm -hmm. okay uh, is that going to take downtime activity time or is that going to take are they magically encrypted or are they just written in code they're written in a code uh i would say probably it'll be a downtime thing well i need you all mind if i Try the armor on and see. I never touch the stuff. I'm aware. I mean, this is made very well. It's light, weight, and. Who would interfere with my characters? I already have plenty of armor. Yeah. I just, you know, wanted to be polite. <laughs> yeah. Sol also motions to himself, showing that he did not have size. <laughs> Give him a fat minute. Yeah. I'm a little curious as to what it's doing in the first place. Um, Elwyn, when you put it on, it's very lightweight, um, and it's like thin enough that it could fit under all of your robes and things like that. Um, you, yeah, you can get the protection without like wearing it like on the top, like a normal chain shirt. Um, and yeah, it, you can feel like a slight hum of energy that kind of starts to, you feel it like kind of tune to your own energy and it just kind of resonates with you. Yeah. What is that? Is it just to? normal elven chain? It's just normal elven chain. Yep. Well, hold on, let me add it to my inventory. Hold your horses. <laughs> Calm down. Elven just slowly reaching to put it in the inventory. Elven chain. So then, yeah, we got the seed, the gem, these documents, the chair, obviously the chair, and then... Lots of money. Lots of money. Um, I have to remove the mine shirt and our leather armor, but you can add the mine shirt yes. quality to my elven chain as well. Right. Okay, my AC is 16. Wow, that's really good. I think it was... Um, like 12 before. 13 before. Pretty good bump. Yeah. Pretty mm -hmm. good. Pretty 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 good. Pretty
<laughs> what would you like to do? Um. Well, I think I'm gonna go back to the book I was reading. <laughs> Y'all have a great night. <laughs> she like staggers out of the room. All oh, well, her upstairs. <laughs> Clothing all like acid eaten. Cast <laughs> a couple more healing, healing <laughs> spells on you. Charm grabs Torin before he heads back up and asks, well, lets him know that she admires his technique and wit. He might give her a few pointers. Yeah, he kind of like puts his hand on the back of his head and like rubs it. and You can tell like if he could blush a little bit, he would be. <laughs> he says, ah, no, that, that's real sweet of you. I mean, to be honest, I think that the way that you fight, I mean, that's, that's amazing. The, the, the honey and the bees... All I've got is this sword and shield. It's you. Remarkably used. Oh, well, yeah, thanks. If you want pointers, anytime. I, I do a lot of daily training, so... Right now. Like, right this moment? Yeah. He kind of, like, gestures <laughs> upward. <laughs> He's, like, still bringing to go after taking out a suit of armor. Yeah, himself. and um, as you guys walk <laughs> back out of that room, there's just, like, pieces of armor scattered <laughs> everywhere. Yeah. Um, how can we like lock this place back up? Is everything is there all the mechanism like totally the, uh, destroyed now, or is it like the the fake bookcase door has been ripped <laughs> off its hinges? Yeah, that, yeah. Um, but uh, the vault door is intact. Yeah. Okay. And we know the combination. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, do we know the combination? I'd say yeah. you know the combination. Okay, so then I guess we just lock it up. And uh, I think the combination would be like a year. Like 200 or so years ago, something like that. Okay, sure. Yeah, we basically just yeah. have. Yep. Okay. Who wants to do, start doing downtime activities? Oh, this wasn't the downtime activities? Well, I, I feel like the transition was there for charm, so yeah. why don't yeah, you do the honors? Okay. This one so okay. for charm for the next week, you kind of want to spend time training with Torin. Um, so, the training downtime, usually you pick, like, a proficiency in, like, a skill, or, um, uh, a language. With Torin, I'd say it could also be, like, a weapon or a type of armor. Um, is there anything in particular you want to train in? Um. Torin, the skills that Torin can help with are, I wrote it down somewhere, just give me a sec. Um, here we go. Uh, the skills that Torrin can help with are athletics, survival, intimidation, or perception. And then he's also proficient with like shields, any armor, or any simple or martial weapon. Definitely intimidation. Okay. Um, now normally training is modified so it's it's 10 weeks and then you subtract your intelligence modifier but i don't think intelligence makes sense for every skill so i'm going to say what is your what's your charisma modifier <laughs> it's worse <laughs> is it worse than your intelligence intelligence is zero okay what then about it would... like strength or dex because it's yeah. what's that? oh it's intimidation training. i would oh, strength could work what's your strength, strength? is whack. whack okay so it'll be it'll take about nine weeks so it's going to be a little while um it's fine Training also normally would cost uh, 25 gold pieces per week. However, downtime in Amber Hearths costs are halved oh, due to sweet. the town policy where like necessities are covered. Cool. So oh, I'm, like, I'm like imagining the Monsters Inc. part where like Sully's like <laughs> 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 practicing screaming and he'll train me, and that's like what they're doing. Like Torn's like, alright, oh, scary face. <laughs> yeah, Torn, well. Torn probably takes you to like. The old quarry, which is just, just like this big <laughs> stone pit in the ground that's kind of filled with water at the bottom. Uh, and he like stands you on top of, on the edge, and he's like, "Now, I found that this is a real good place to start your morning. It really, just gets you in the right place. And this is what I do." And he kind of stands up to the edge, and he like holds out his arms wide, and he throws back his head, and he goes, Run! and just shouts as loud as he can. And as he does so, this like frost breath. <laughs> It rubs from his mouth. He's like, "Your turn, go." And Term is just like, <laughs> "Oh, right, right, wrong." <laughs> no words. Right. Yeah, 
She's just like, ooh. <laughs> Try it in my brain. Do it in my brain. Yep. Uh, he like he like knocks on his head and he's like, don't worry, solid. Okay. So the charm will start out with buzzing like bees and make it go up. Yes, make it go louder and louder and louder and louder until he's like vibrating. <laughs> Roll an intimidation check. <laughs> Intimidation is like negative one, so it's eighteen. Okay. Um, this training would have taken you nine weeks. With that check, we're gonna say it takes eight. Sweet. So, um, I guess that means you put it down to seven total. So you've got seven left to go, and then you'll be proficient in intimidation. Okay. Um, and Torn basically like takes you through this entire course about like how to be loud, be impressive, be intimidating, kind of like hold yourself up tall and strong. Um, Fun. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> uh, yeah, and you just spend the entire week working with Torin. So um, I grab my scarf and I flip it over my back. Now, way more confidence. Spider on. <clears throat> uh, I should make a note that you have seven... I'm more confident that no bump in charisma at all. <laughs> They're just all. Yeah. Okay. Uh, who wants to go next? Um, I have a couple things I want to do. Um, one of them is going to take the week, and two of them like smaller things. Mm -hmm. So, I think um, Ambrose is going to go searching for. Someone that she can, like, talk to about making dresses and clothes. Yeah. Um, so you go out into the market, or into into town, and the, the place with most of the shops is sort of the market place. Um, a little bit of searching. It's not too hard to find uh, the sort of shop that you're looking for. Uh, let me just find the information on it. <clears throat> um, you find yourself standing in front of a a small storefront um, and it has a sign that has kind of like a spool mm -hmm. with like yarn wound around it um, and then it's got a, like a pair of scissors um, and the label for the shop says spools yarn and stuff wouldn't it be funny if like reverse personas work there <laughs> you can define how many personas did we say you had? Uh, how many was it? Five, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, you can right. say one works anywhere you want. <laughs> See, <it was> <laughs> walking. Oh shoot, what's happening? <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah, so I'll go in and see if anyone is like here in charge of the place. Yeah, as you walk in, um, the person behind the counter—it's a very like quiet shop. Like, you can see the dust floating in the air, and um, it's just like there's a silence to this place. Um, you hear a sound from behind the counter as a figure turns around in a swivel chair and kind of fixes you with a, a, a gaze. Um, and you can see a uh, Warforged there, um, and they have, like, on their shoulder, they have, like, spools attached to the shoulder. And they're working on two knitting projects simultaneously <laughs> behind the counter. Uh, but they kind of set those down and kind of turn towards you. Hello. Uh, hi, are you Spool? I am. Hi, my name's uh, Embers of White Ash. Um, and I would also like to clarify, Embers, Spool is probably one of the few people you've ever met who talks as quietly as you do. <laughs> they are a very quiet individual. Okay. Uh, I came... Because I'm something of a um, seamstress myself. Oh, oh, I see. Looking yes. for a bit of help setting up. I just moved here. That's very... I've lived here for... Hmm... 15 years? Hmm. Um... Do you have any spare mannequins or dress forms or anything like that? Um, they kind of swivel the chair around... 
uh, and roll it back so that they can look back into like the storage room. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Perhaps two or three. I could procure more though. Great, I'd be looking to buy a couple. Excellent. Excellent. How many? Um, two. One about my size and one a bit smaller. Yeah, okay. About average person human height. Yes, full nods and kind of wheels the chair into the back. They don't get up, they just push around on their chair basically. <laughs> um, uh, and comes back with hands full of, there's like two of them. Uh, one of them, they're both kind of the same size, but Spool shows you there's actually ways to kind of like adjust height and, mm -hmm. and stuff like that on them. I don't know if that's actually how dress forms work, but these ones do. Let's ask Melissa because I think both of us are deeply clueless here. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. perfect. That's yeah. valid. Yeah, there's like yes. a little, a little yeah. lever to make it wider. And... Yeah, yeah, cool. I figured there must be. It's, it's like, think of it as like plate armor. Yeah. Where you can mm. adjust it. Gotcha, gotcha. Uh, and the other thing, I was looking to consult with you, actually. Um, oh! About a design mm. for some clothes. And Embers will go into detail about what she wants, what she's looking for, about, like, this is the kind of thing I'm looking for, I want it this aesthetic, and it's got to, you know, like, move loosely, and, you know. Um, Spool kind of wheels out from behind the counter, uh, and, like, along a wall that is just basically, like, rolls of fabric stacked, like, three mm -hmm. layers high. <laughs> Unless it's fanning yourself here. Yeah. Um, and yeah, you can go through the different fabrics and kind of um, pick out the sort of style that you're looking for. Mm -hmm. um, I think Spool would probably pull out like a book that has different like cuts and things like that. And you can kind of leaf through that until you find the one that you want. And then Spool would like roll around you and like take measurements. Um, yeah. Now I'm going to be the one actually making the garment. I just need a design. I don't have a lot of experience doing that. Okay, okay. I don't know if I've ever sold just a design before. I'm not quite sure how to price that. Well, they think for a second. The design plus the fact. Mm -hmm. Um. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And a bit, a bit, a bit, a bit, a bit, a bit. Where is my notes? <laughs> My Amber Hearth note is already way too long. <laughs> uh, okay, so what kind of outfit are... So just like broad strokes. Are you looking yeah. for like a clothes comma common, clothes comma fine, clothes comma travelers, clothes comma costume? Uh, let's call this somewhere between fine and travelers. Give me, give me the price for fine. Fine would be 15. Okay. Um, and we'll say that doing it on your own will cut it down to like seven. Okay. So it's just the. Yeah. Let's break it back. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you, you can get the design and all the fabric for seven. Okay. Uh, and then I'll, we'll say that it's just like one gold for the two dress forms together. Okay. So yeah, cool. eight total to get everything you want. All right. Um, I'm going to on a trip pretty soon, but um, so no rush on the design. But um, I'll see it when I get back. Sure, sure. I should be able to whip this up pretty quickly. It's a little quiet in here. Mm. And they smile when they say that. I noticed. Anyway, nice meeting you. Yes, you too. Pleasure. Leaves. A little bell tinkles as you leave. And you can see in the window, Spool goes back to their two simultaneous projects. <laughs> Using the shoulder spools. Yep. <laughs> Uh, and then what did you want to do for the entire... I'll week? let somebody else go. Okay. Ellen's going to check out um, the Fox Ridge family, I think, and try to get into their good graces. Okay. Um, how do you, you want to go about doing that? Um, well, I think she may... Maybe invite... Emmeline to tea up at the oh. Amber Hold. Mm -hmm. And just have a nice like tea and luncheon prepared so they can talk and she can learn about the town and about Emmeline's Emmeline's what's I've been saying Emily. Emmeline's family. And <clears throat> just try to learn about the heirs as much as possible. 
Okay. And then, you know, send out, like, letters of, of, like, introduction or whatever, like, you know, we're in town, and, you know, all the, like, all the noble shit that she knows how to do, she was raised that Just way. Choose. The, like, good, good manners, good etiquette, like, oh, I need to make sure that I say my hellos to all the, you know, high ups, and make sure that I've checked off all these boxes. So this would be um, upper class carousing. Up, up, upper class carousing. Yes. Yeah. Um, turn down the music just a little bit. Um, wow, upper class carousing is expensive. It's expensive. Um, but it, it would drop down to half. Uh, so half of two hundred and fifty is one twenty-five. Yep. Um, and then you resolve it by. Yes. Or I'm at one thirty three. Um if you would roll a charisma persuasion check. Right. We'll see how this resolved and then we can talk about it a little bit. Okay. Charisma persuasion. Do not fail me now, so <clears throat> Uh oh, that's pretty good. I think that's a twenty one. Yeah. Twenty one. Twenty one. Okay, that's very good. Yeah. Um so you make three contacts okay. um, I know. that kind of owes you a little bit of favor, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so how this, the way this plays out is you have tea with Emmeline, and when Emmeline comes in uh, up to the keep, mm-hmm. um, she is she's kind of in her her wheelchair, and she the wheelchair is being pushed uh, by. A young woman probably in like her 20s um maybe early 30s looks like looks like probably a i guess it'd be more 20s looks like probably a grand uh grandson sorry granddaughter i meant to i meant to say in his yeah I a was, young man in his 20s. i was i was looking at the wrong npc <laughs> like, young man like, in his what 20s. Is my bad. i i flipped halfway because i looked at i found the right npc um who you learn is Lawson Foxridge. Um, Lawson. Yeah, Lawson Foxridge, it turns out, is the son of Emmeline's daughter, which is why I was saying she originally. <laughs> um, uh, Emmeline's daughter, Emmeline Jr. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yes. yes. Uh-huh. Perfect. Uh, and Lawson, um, you learn... Lawson's pretty quiet throughout most of the tea kind of just keeps to himself like while the two of you are having your discussion he might maybe pulls out like a little book and is just kind of reading and then like casually sipping tea and taking um you know a couple of the sandwiches or whatever mm-hmm. um, but you find out that he's kind of taken it upon himself to care for emmeline in recent years so uh he often uh pushes her around in her wheelchair for her and um you know will prepare meals for her and things like that um so I would say let's say that one of your your favor contacts is Emmeline. Mm-hmm. One of them can be Lawson. Um, and then I think probably during the tea, someone else would show up. But I'll let you decide who. It could be Emmeline Jr., who is one of Emmeline's daughters. It could be uh, Luca Foxridge, who is Emmeline's uh, second child, her son. Um, and he's a, like a, he's, he's a successful business owner in a different field. Um, or it could be Lyric Foxridge, who is the wife of Emmeline's youngest child, uh, Evelyn. Um, but throughout the tea, you learn that Evelyn recently passed away. It's, oh. it's kind of not around. But, um, L- Lyric still is part of the so, when it comes to Emmeline's successor in the council, is it between Emmeline Jr. and Luca? Uh, it could, it could be Emmeline Jr., it could be Luca, it, I mean, it could be Lyric, it could even be, Lyric has a child named Promise, it could be Lawson, so, 
So it could be any of them. Yeah, or it could be other more distant, like, cousin family members as well. I was wondering if there was, like, a, like, big, like, party versus party thing happening, or are they all just kind of held out for it, or is it is it cutthroat? What's the temperature? Um, we're, gonna, I... we're gonna get an episode of the show that's just six hours. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I mean, yeah. you're not wrong yeah but no but i mean i my the reason i ask this is i want if if i'm getting in with emily yeah, yeah. and if i'm getting in with lawson if i pull lawson aside and kind of get the 411 about like the inheritance and what's happening mm-hmm. um who like the biggest players um right now or the people who are most likely or the people who are Maybe the most opposed to, like, Lawson, for example. I want someone on each side of the plane, too. I see. my point. Uh, I think most people who you talk to, like, um, maybe you get invited to kind of like a, you know, like a returning the favor type thing. You get invited to um, tea over at, like, the Fox Ridge Manor, which is Ooh. this big, massive estate um, mm-hmm. outside of town. Um <laughs> Um, Noble. As you as you kind of meet more of the Fox Ridges, and then also kind of like the, you know, they have like um, a paid uh, staff that kind of helps around the the estate and things like that. Um, as the more you interact with the Fox Ridge group, you get the sense that pretty much any member of the family could have a claim to, you know, Emmeline's seat. Probably the most prominent one is Emmeline Junior. Mm-hmm. Um, she's widely seen as like the most loyal daughter because um, she took over running the Fox Ridge family's brewing company uh, when Emmeline started to take more of an active hand in like politics um, and was like working on her investments in, in Freighton and things like that. Um, most of the brewing company passed to Emmeline Jr. So she's probably the, the, the forerunner. Um, but yeah, you, you really get the sense, especially from like talking to, I'm giving you a lot because you rolled really high, <laughs> um, especially from talking to like the, the staff that you interact with when you go to visit for t- um, you know, tea as well. Um, pretty much each, at least each of the main members of the family is vying for, um, you know, the biggest slice in the will you know, in the future, um, and also that council seat, so it is pretty hotly contested. And there are definitely, like, outside cousins as well who would be involved if it came to that. I see. So, here's another angle. Um, you mentioned last last week? Mm-hmm. What was last week? The council episode? Something before, it was, before. yeah. Um, when we were learning about Lord Mr. Lap and his uh, opinion about the empire coming in and Emmeline was on his side are there members of the family who share that opinion or are there members of the family who are on the other side of that and support the empire and getting a temperature on the people who are against the empire within the family would be something else that would mm. guide my choice I don't think you get the sense that anyone has quite as strong of a stance as Emmeline herself. Um, I think maybe the, the closest would be um, Emmeline's uh, grandchild Promise. Mm. Would be the closest to Emmeline's level of anti-empire. Mm. All right, then. I was already leaning lyric or promise anyway, so let's do promise. Okay. Um, yeah, as you kind of interact with promise, um, promise's pronouns are they, them. Uh, they faint, uh, they, they, like, as you interact with them, they talk a lot about how, like, their family's very, very privileged um, and how it's their responsibility to like give back to the community, and so they talk a lot about like volunteer work they do down at Hearth Hall uh, from time to time, um, and just like various various causes that they believe in. That's great. Good. 
Yeah. So um, you picked Promise, Emmeline herself, and then there was a third one, right? Uh, Lawson, I Lawson. Think. Lawson. Okay. Promise is who's lyrics? Lyrics. And the third. Lyric and um, Lyric's wife was Evelyn, but Evelyn passed away recently. I might need you to send a family tree to us. <laughs> <laughs> Written down so I can just copy okay. my notes. Um, <laughs> Cause I that was see. a lot of names. It was. Yes. <laughs> um, let's see. I just don't want to write it in my notes which ones you picked and I can't find the right section. Okay, here we go. Um, favors are Emmeline, Lawson, and Promise. Okay. Every um, time you say Lawson, I think of the comedian. Me too. Oh, jeez. Yep. I've made a grave mistake. Yep, that's exactly what I was like, <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> the name of a convenience store chain in Japan is Lawson. Mm -hmm. yeah. They always had the best stuff. They were like the, the like, I did like Lawson star. better than Family Mart. They were like the five star convenience chain. Family Mart was the pretty decent. And then there's 7 Eleven. And then there's 7 Eleven, yeah. which yeah. is like, eh. <laughs> All right, embers are burnt. Um, yeah, I can go. So, aside from my personas that are littered around Amber Hearth, I thought about a few places where they would be. I don't know if you wanted to talk about that, if that's important or not. But I was going to carouse the lower class, the criminals and the scum of Amber <laughs> Hearth, mm -hmm. and get in with them. Mm -hmm. uh, contrary to carousing the upper class, carousing the lower class only cost ten oh, gold it's pieces. Like, it's like pennies. So yeah. five. <laughs> yeah, no problem. It's chump change for when I'm mm -hmm. gambling away the money, or whatever I'm doing. <laughs> um, how do you want to go about that? Yeah, so I'm going to use my um, shape shift form that I've used once before. Uh, Onyx, who's a Earth Genasi man, he has like a buzz cut haircut. He's pretty tall. Powerful build. Is that the form you used to ask about what was going on in Everhart when we were on Fallon? That is the form I used to, um, what's the word I'm looking for? When you, like, sell, like, illicit goods, fencing yeah, money. Yeah, yeah. Okay. that's fencing the poisons and stuff we found. Right, right. Yep. Um, yeah. So, I would try and find if there's, like, a, you know... Not necessarily a criminal syndicate, but like some under, you know, some okay. thugs or a ring of, you know, people. The other thing is lower class, not just the thugs, but also like merchants and stuff too. Mm -hmm. And really what, lower I'm, class merchants. really what I'm buying for is people who know about the Underdark and oh, the I trade see. routes that were so either once established. You'd probably find yourself in, um, what are they called? Um... The uh, Amber, Amber Mines, which yeah. uh, the Shovel Sharp clan lives in and calls Shovel Sharp Citadel. Okay. So I can be there, mm -hmm. or... That's where you would places. be finding out about like those trade routes and stuff like that. Sure. Uh, okay, and then you need to roll a Charisma Persuasion check. Okay. Oh, is it just Persuasion? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's unfortunate. Okay, well, that's fine. I was hoping it'd be either Persuasion or Intimidation, but that's okay. Uh, yeah. The way you're going about it, I'd allow intimidation. We can be flexible on yeah, this one. Yeah, you're okay with it. Uh, that's pretty good. That's a... Uh, Where's a uh, torn when you get your... 23? <sighs> 20? Okay, yeah, that's yeah. another three. I, I'm points. proficient in intimidation, so... Um, plus seven. <laughs> so... Yeah, I mean, you catch you catch bites on pretty much every angle that you're looking for. Okay. Carousing in, like, the dwarven taverns and things like that. Um... You meet up with uh, someone who, who seems to be kind of like a criminal type. You meet up with uh, someone who is, you know, kind of like um, not a not a merchant themselves, but like involved with like hauling goods back and forth between Erudition and mm. Amber Hearth. Perfect. Um, yeah, one other contact. What sort of person would you want for like the third one? So I have a person that's good at hauling goods. Let's see. Criminal type person. And then... 
Honestly, it could also just be a lower class person who's like very not less, I don't say like politically involved, but very social. Just to kind of get a pulse on how like the Maybe different like a, a barkeep or something like that? Yeah. Someone who has connections, barkeep. someone who knows like what's going on in town and like when things are happening or coming or whatever. Um So yeah, okay, go back. Criminal and a someone with a finger on the pulse. What would, what would you call someone who like hauls goods back and forth, like a? Trucker. <laughs> uh, yeah, I want to say like a stevedore, but that's like a very. Dumb... I'll just say trucker. <laughs> yeah. Not quite right, but like a smuggler, you know? Because yeah. yeah, on the up and up. I can't yeah. Think this um, maybe they just smuggle. For the one with like the finger on the pulse of Did things, if you want, no, you can call in that. Favor now, and I'll give you a roll on the rumor table. Call in a favor now. But then um, you don't get the favor. Yeah. You can also call it in later for a roll on the rumor table. Sorry, so can you explain the rumor table? I have a table table with a table. list of Amber Hearth rumors. Okay. Like rumors about things going on around Amber Hearth. Uh huh. And the, is this just a one time, either now or later? Or yeah, is it you like could a... do it later if you want. It's fine too. That's just an option because you wanted someone with the pulse on it. Yeah, I mean. Sure, I can do or it. Or you could call it in later for like a specific. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, maybe we'll wait till we have something okay. specific. That makes sense. Okay. Um. The the criminal person you meet up with is kind of like a. I had an idea for this sort of person. Um, is like a, like a really young man, like eighteen, nineteen. Okay. Got like. A little bit of like. He's got, like, curly red hair. He's human. He's got freckles. Uh, he's got a little <laughs> okay. bit of, like, red beard hair coming in on the chin. I feel bad picking on this. Kid. Yeah. Um, <laughs> when you meet up with him in the bar, um, he's you're sitting across the table from him, and uh, uh, he introduces himself as, um, what did I decide? Five-fingered Fred. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm Five-fingered Fred. Yeah. What's your name? Onyx just, like... Keeps his arms folded. Oh, yeah. You're, you're, you're tough. Yeah, yeah, I can tell. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, and as you look at his fingers, he has all ten fingers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 like, goes from, he, like, looks around the hand and, like, gives him, a, gives him a look like, I don't understand the, the name, I don't really care either. <laughs> yeah. But he then after a, like, kind of a long silence, he just says, Onyx. Oh, mm, yeah, yeah, you're real tough. Now, listen right here. I got... He kind of like pulls, like uh, gestures for you to lean in across the table. Yeah, yeah, we'll lean forward. I don't want you to tell anyone, but now I got the inn at the Clouder. So if, if you want to do some real jobs, I can get you in. Hmm. I mean, they're expanding. I mean, we do burglaries, robberies, pickpocketing, you know, all the all the good stuff. Real profitable. The, the boss, oh man, man, she's tough. All local jobs. Uh, we're, we're working on expanding. I mean, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not privileged to all the big details, but you know, I hear we're gonna be in, in, you know, moving outside of Ardley or even eventually. We're gonna be big. Hmm. I see. Um, and he. Uh, he kind of sees that look of disbelief on your face and he kind of leans in across the table and gets real conspiratorial with you and says, um, <clears throat> I'm for real. Let me, let me tell you about this boss. I'm going to insight check him. Okay, yeah, roll it. Okay. I think you're friend. A natural one. Okay, I have no idea. <laughs> you're just, I, just like all Enraptured by his charisma. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah. I just like, I'm just so... Yeah, exactly. Just disbelief. Like, ah, this guy, is he really... This, this boss, the, the Clouder's boss, she's the toughest person i ever seen. Uh, you know, cat person. Ears. You know the like? <laughs> uh, she's got this kind of like orangey fur. Kind of like splashes of brown and whatnot. You know the type. Yeah, she's real tough. Grew up on the streets, you know? Um, and she says, she's got something she always says. She says, if you want something, it's up to you to take it. And he kind of like leans back, right? Real cool. Sure. Goes by the name Flames. Flames. Okay. Can you 
introduce me to this flames person. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Like I said, I got the end. I'm just kind of like, <laughs> you can tell he's he's like three beers in. He's just like feeling it. So. Okay. Yeah. That's great. So yeah, you've got you've got an in at the clouder with I five fingered like Fred. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. and then you've got your other ones. Cool. Which we can define later. All right. Five fingered Fred was the only one I actually thought about. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, and let me know if you need me to tell you, or I guess I can tell you on like a, on this part or something. We can talk about the other personas if it's important as well. Uh, yeah, we can. All, you can also just define them as they come up. It's. I already have a, have a few in mind. Okay. So. Yeah, send them to me. Sure. Uh, yeah. So that takes care of Vert. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ambrose is going to do some research, and I think we talked about this. I want to either... She's researching some basically Arcana-type stuff, Mm -hmm. magic stuff, and she's not totally sure who to go to for that. My idea is for either try to do an interlibrary loan, because we're establishing that um, that earlier branch of um, the... uh, What was it? The Argent? Argent Japanese. Yeah. 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 So... See if I can get a contact there, or see if I can ask uh, Nadia or not. Um, well, as luck would have it, the representative for the Argent Athenaeum comes during the week to set up an imperial repository here in the city. Mm-hmm. Um, they're given kind of a, you know, an, a vacant building to set up in, um, and when you go in. Uh, the library is basically in the process of being set up, um, and the person you see there is um, <clears throat> one of those. Um, you remember when you were at the Argent Athenaeum? There were those uh, like metal peacekeeper mm-hmm. robots that kind of walked around, um, and they had those like cores of blue arcane energy to Mm -hmm. them. Um, One of those is kind of in the process of like putting up shelves and organizing books and things like that. And she turns to you and says, Hello! Welcome to the Imperial Repository of Amberheart. Hi. Um, what's, What's your name? I am Argentum, or at least a sliver of her. Oh, oh. You can call me Ari. Hi, Ari. Uh, my name's Embers. Mm. It's a pleasure to meet you. I came to find out if there was a book here. I'm trying to do some research into a particular topic. Um, do you know or do you know how I can find out anything about um, magical tattoos? Mm. The robot kind of like tilts its head back and you can see the core of it kind of pulses softly. I have not yet set up the library here and done a full catalog of what is available. However, you are welcome to begin research. Let me get a table for you. Okay. And she goes over to a table in the corner and like picks it up with two hands <laughs> and then brings it to the center of the room and sets it down. Oh. There you go. Oh, uh, thank you. Um, great. I'll just start. Thanks. Bye. Let me know if you need anything. Okay. I will be right here organizing the books. All right. Ambrose is going to spend most of the week uh, researching. Okay. Uh, research ordinarily would cost you um, 50 gold pieces at least um, spent on materials and things like that mm-hmm. that would be halved um, and it is an intelligence check but you get a plus one bonus for every 50 gold pieces or in this case 25 spent beyond the initial 25 this is just straight straight intelligence Yep. Okay. So it's one fifty-eight. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna kick this up to a hundred. That's okay with y'all. Is that with the discounts? With the discounts, so I'm gonna get a plus three to this. Mm. Is that okay? I don't mind. It's okay. Okay. You guys have plenty of money now. We yeah. do. We're rich. We're rich. This dies and gets me tonight. Uh. <laughs> that was a discordant note all of yeah. a sudden. Uh, 21. Oh, snap. Awesome. That's what you need for three pieces of lore. Sweet. 
Okay. Um, yeah, with Ari's help throughout the week, as she starts to get kind of a better catalog of the um, the books here. Oh, and I should say, um, ordinarily, you can get advantage for like a well-stocked library. This doesn't count as that yet, but like if you have topics you want to research and can say that in advance, you can get books brought here to get that advantage. Okay. Um, there wasn't quite enough time for it this time, but there yeah. would be for next time. Okay. Um, I gotta find my bits of lore. Okay. Um, you learn that magical tattoos have been used in Elendal for at least oh. 2,000 years, so there's a very long history of their use. Um, though they've certainly become less common in recent years, and that's because uh, they generally require the cooperation of a wizard to create, uh, and those are in very short supply nowadays. Um, they're kind of a blend of magic and artistry in that, um, in addition to a wizard, there's often a artist who kind of applies the tattoo. The wizard kind of creates the magic item needed, and then the artist applies it. Um, though the wizard could do both if the wizard was also an artist, theoretically. Mm -hmm. um, the tattoo is initially bound to a needle uh, by the wizard who creates them, and then the artist transfers the needle's magic to a, cre a, a creature. Um, that's the first bit. <laughs> All that is to say the first bit. <laughs> Second bit, uh, there's any number of effects that magical tattoos could apply. Uh, some common ones would be absorbing damage from certain types, like uh, the fire or ice would be common, or um, granting the general the bearer a general protective field. Um, some might allow creatures to magically disguise themselves or improve a creature's senses. Um, but some wizards and mages have even had success in viewing tattoos with spells that the bearer can activate and cast from the tattoo. The third bit of lore that you discover um, is an obscure reference. You find it in a history book. One point of time during the Age of Tyrants, which was quite a while back now at this point, uh, I think it's a matter of thousands of years, um, when chromatic dragons still kind of ruled the area, the land that became the Stratian Empire. Um, there was an ancient black dragon by the name of Degu, the Decaying Death. Um, but beyond the raw power traditionally ascribed to dragons of his age, uh, and he was a very, very old dragon even back then, um, he was also known to be an incredibly powerful wizard. Uh, throughout his territory, he was known for the magic items that he created and then placed into his hoard. Um, but also, you find notes that he often required important servants to bear magical tattoos, and this, it's, the book says so that he could watch them and act through them. Okay. I like how Ember's just talking to only robots during that. Like, that kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Baby steps. Yep. <laughs> Okay. Um, Did you find everything you were looking for? No. I mm. found a lot. I found. I think all the books could teach me. If there's anything else in particular you would like to learn. Yeah, I'll I'll share with Ari some of the stuff I learned. Just kind of like talking to Ari. I don't know how much of a person Ari is. It's hard for everybody to judge. Yeah. But she's also not the kind of person who would like assume that Ari is not a person. Mm -hmm. um, Ari responds like a person. Yeah. Certainly. And so, so I learned this, this, and that, and the other. Uh, I made some, found some really interesting things in the old history. But what I was looking for this whole time and never really found was how do we remove one? Oh, okay. That's interesting. Actually, um, if that's what you were looking for. I guess I should have clarified with you before I wrote out all the lore. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> you rolled high enough to get basically what you want. Okay. Um, so I will say um, there would have been references probably in that more general bit about like how they're applied and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, depending on the tattoo's strength, 
spells like Dispel Magic might remove it entirely, or they might just suppress it temporarily. Um, many varieties of them also basically require an attunement, and uh, breaking attunement with the tattoo would um, would also suffice, but that depends on the tattoo's variety. Um, it can also be suppressed with like anti-magic fields and things like that. Um, a powerful enough magic user might be able to like cause the ink to go back into a needle. Um, yeah, but it would it would probably take a powerful magic user to do that. Sounds good. Thank you. I didn't realize that's what you were looking for exactly. Yeah. But I, I couldn't specify for the game. <laughs> you rolled high enough that you get it, so. Uh, and I've spent enough money. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's everyone, right? I didn't miss anything? No. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I have one more small thing. Um, and this can... This is toward the end of the week, certainly, because it's after Embrace has done all this research and after definitely... Um, Charm is finished training with Torin. I would get Embers is gonna go up to Torin and say like, "Hey, Torin." Yeah. Can I talk to you, man? Sure. Uh, so, we're headed down to the Underdark soon. Um, you know, uh, down to Erudition. Find a find a way there. Find uh -huh. some trade routes. Mm -hmm. Um, I want you to stay here. Uh, Torin like cocks his head and then says, "Oh, right, right, right. Someone's gotta watch the keep." Right. Mm -hmm. um, but also, remember how you were going about to be like kind of the commander in the wardens? Oh, right. But you told me no, so I no. didn't. I didn't say yes. But I think that they were onto something. I think you you could be a good leader. Um, and I'll show Torin the like notice Embers has written up um, okay. on some some paper, like here, and it says, uh, "Heroes wanted. The Silver Seekers are recruiting. Do you have what it takes to step up when danger rears its head? Apply at the Amberhold. Ask for Torin Brenwarm." Um, wages five gold a week plus considerations. You want me to start recruiting? Yeah, we let's start with three, three good people, three people who who won't die easy. He kind of like narrows his eyes and nods. Right. Yeah, three, three you, people who won't die easy. Right. If you if someone comes up and you don't think that they have what it takes to you know do what we do, like if I could push them over easily. Uh, yeah. But, but, you know, I mean, think about who, think about us. I mean, I think you could push Ellen over pretty easily. You probably could have pushed over Tuppence easily. Probably. But she was tough. But she, she was, was tough. tough. Right. So, you know, just use, use your best judgment and find three, three good people who can be seekers. I'm on it, boss. All right. And yeah, he like, you can see he straightens up a little bit and like puffs out his chest. Yeah. He feels proud to be given yeah. this assignment. And ever since that, that day, at some point, you're going to paste up the, the notice uh, on the uh, the Ember Hearth or the the Hearth Hearth uh, Hall Hearth Hall. Yeah, yes. thanks. It doesn't help that everything is here is like Amber this <laughs> yeah. or Hearth that. Yeah, sorry. My first son up there takes it. Oh yeah, I'll take this character for you. <laughs> Adding to my payoff, I owe the party three recruits for the Silver Seekers. Mm -hmm. That's all I had for it. Sorry to take off. <laughs> do the group of you at all want to, and this can be something we start with next week, do the group of you want to visit Nadia before you start your trek to the end of the Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah we, we definitely want I to think once she gets her shop. Nadia's wares. Um, her yeah. shop is probably set up before the end of the week. So, you know, right at the end of the week, right before you're thinking about heading down into the Underdark, um, you make your way to uh, Nadia's shop. Uh, and you find yourselves let me just try and get the volume right um, you find yourselves where did I put the notes on not this shot there it is um, you find yourself outside a building that is not at all in keeping with the village's aesthetic um, <laughs> It is this 
like and, and Nanya must have like reconstructed it to be this way um it is this building that now has this like elegant front and it's painted all black and red and gold um and outside the front of it there are these like standing torch-like things uh but instead of a torch flame in them they have these um sparks basically they're sparklers outside the front uh that are going constantly with like gold sparks but then they'll change to red sparks and occasionally only occasionally they'll flicker into like rainbow multicolored sparks and there is a sign above the door that says in big letters harmony's wild magics uh and amber hearth branch um and on the sign there is a uh like a, an illusory image of a tiefling woman with pink skin, purple hair, um, silver eyes, a broad grin that reveals a couple pointed fangs. Um, and can each of you roll me a charisma check? <laughs> sure. Just a general charisma check. Not good. I use the dice that used to belong to Harmony. Oh. <laughs> Not great. <laughs> Ten. Okay. Twelve. Eight. Six. Six. Um, as the group of you are kind of... Wow, ten was the highest. Twelve. Twelve, oh, twelve was the highest. Yeah, this, this oh, this is okay. lovely. Um, as the group of you are standing outside the shop, kind of taking it in, um, at two separate points, Vert, you swear that you catch the sign, um, like the image of Harmony on it, um, stick out her tongue at you like mm. yeah okay. uh, and then go back to normal like holding the grin at a separate time Elwyn you swear you catch her kind of winking like flirtatiously <laughs> at you uh, and as the group of you are go to step into the shop we'll pick up there next week <laughs> um, thank you as always for playing thank you to anyone who came to watch we'll be back with more of this Monday 7pm Pacific time hope to see you then Bye. Bye. Bye.